afternoon, this is Prime Television, media news rather at 12 hours. We take a look at the headlines. So Sheke poll turned out impressive while voting is also underway in the seven words. Kitwe family of a taxi driver who died in police custody fumes. Lack of development angers Lufuanyama residents. In international news, Zimbabwean president sued over fuel price hikes. Join us shortly with the details on the other side after this message. We'll be right back. With the details this afternoon, my name is Luando Bili Chaleka. Voting in the Sesheke Central Parliamentary by election is underway. The voting atmosphere in Sesheke is generally peaceful. Polling stations opened at 06 hours in the morning with the voter turnout being described as impressive, according, but according to the report by GIA's initiative election monitor, Arnold Banda. At Nakatindi Primary School polling station, voters started queuing at 23 hours on Monday night while at Welfare Hall polling station, voters arrived at 01 hours. The voters did not leave the queues despite some brief rainfall experienced before opening of polling stations. Sasheke constituency has 27,872 registered voters with nine wards and 43 polling stations. The Sasheke seat fell vacant following the death of Member of Parliament, Frank Kufakwandi, who died in South Africa. The by-elections are also going on in the Mukomba ward of Lundazi. Chilila Wombwe, Kawe, Katete, Chifunawuli, Isoka and the Chavuma districts. The vacancies in the seven local government by-elections came as a, as a result of resignations and deaths of councillors. We now have Lloyd Kapusa online, who will be giving us an update on what is happening in Sasheke. Good afternoon, Lloyd. Hello, Lloyd. Yes, good afternoon. Will you please give us an update on what is happening in Sasheke? Hello? Would you please give us an update on what is happening in Sasheke? Yeah, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you? Um, we're okay. Good. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Would you please give us an update on what is happening in Sasheke? Uh, currently, voting is underway in Sasheke, and uh, so far, so good. Everything's going on. It's a crazy atmosphere. The voting atmosphere is uh, peaceful. Go uh, the central business district that um uh, shop still, uh, still closed. Mm -hmm. Like everyone is shopping to police stations to cast their vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally, the mood of the voters is, is high. The expectations are high. People are eager to replace the uh, the let them be and have a new member of parliament in office. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Currently, uh, the Sheke is experiencing heavy rainfall, and uh, people are still in the queue uh, voting. So mm -hmm. that is an indication to say people are resolved to ensure that uh, this election is uh, uh, it's over and they have a new member of parliament. Okay. Uh, we do understand that people started queuing up around 01 hours, that was last night. How does the turn up look like? Uh, in some in some, uh, in some polling stations, particularly like Nakatindi, people started queuing up around uh, 23 hours. And uh, at Welfare Hall, uh, right in the center of the Sheke, people are queuing up around zero one one hours, equal at the Sheke Primary School. Waters were earlier zero two, uh, twenty four hours, somewhere there in, in, uh, in Kachimamli, across the Zambezi River. So, people... 
the voters local monitors who, who are on the ground the banda indicates that the voter turnout is the first one good okay well thank you so much lloyd for the update okay. thank you moving on with our news this afternoon And Patriotic Front PA cadres have been have beaten up a journalist from Breeze FM in Eastern Province. Grace Lungu was on her way to cover the Mkomba ward by-election in Lundazi when the incident happened. The cadres first pounced on a taxi driver whom they accused of raising a UPND symbol. We now get to Edward Banda for more details as he will be giving us the details on what is happening in Lundazi. Moving on for our news, this afternoon we'll be able to give you the update as soon as everything will be put in place. Moving on to our news this afternoon, surprisingly, violence has remained part of the electoral process few days after the Commission of Inquiry on the Political Violence presented their report to President Edgar Lungu. People's Alliance for Change President Anford Banda says the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, is to blame for the acts of violence experienced during elections. Mr. Banda says a failure by ECZ to disqualify perpetrators of violence is what encourages the vice. He further calls on President Edgar Lungu to deal with his unprofessional police officers who have been pretending not to see any violence in the patriotic front cadres. Here's a report. After two years of spending taxpayers' money on inquiring into political violence and voting patterns in Zambia, the report presented to President Edgar Lungu on 31st January 2019 does not seem to be yielding results. Zambians continue to witness deadly acts of violence, even at ward elections. Could 11 days be too little for President Lungu to read and begin implementing some of the recommendations made by eminent men and women that moved around the country getting public comments on election violence? Or will this report be rendered a waste? that has begun gathering dust or could be the violence being witnessed during elections not urgent enough for president lungu to act Why? King. incidents of violence as reported in sesheke district western province bring to the four questions as to whether or not the commission of inquiry has indeed done a good job to assure Zambians of peaceful elections? Or is what is being witnessed in Sesheke part of the recommendations made by the Commission? All seems to be speculative as a report has not yet been made public, hence only President Lungu and those that prepared it may know its contents. Bad People's Alliance for Change President Anford Banda says the Electoral Commission of Zambia is to be blamed for the electoral violence as it has proved to be toothless. Violence has been part of our elections and uh, one of the reasons I think for now as PAC want to put the blame on ECZ, the Electoral Code of Conduct is clear uh, that any political party or candidate that is involved in violence during campaigns are disqualified. But if you look at the history of our elections, there's been a lot of violence. Just recently, uh, uh, I think after the 2016 general elections, uh, President Lung instituted a commission of inquiry to uh, look into the causes of violence and voting patterns, meaning that this problem has been huge. But you've never seen at any point the Electoral Commission of Zambia you know, punishing any perpetrators of violence. And Mr. Banda says only President Lungu has powers to instill professionalism in the police service as they have proved to be failures when it comes to dealing with the Patriotic Front members involved in acts of violence. 
You will never hear the police beating PF cadres. All you hear is the police beating you PND cadres. Now the point is that the PF cadres are violent, in as much as you PND cadres are violent. But you, why is that uh, always the victims of these beatings are UPND cadres? Therefore, it is uh, uh, true that the law, uh, the police apply the law, you know, unfairly. You know, they don't uh, fairly apply the law to uh, all political parties. And that's why we have a lot of such problems. So we want to appeal to the president, you know, to, to look into this issue seriously, especially what happened in Sesheke. And uh, we have reports, I mean, we have men on the ground, and we've been receiving reports of the PF, you know, involving themselves in violence. And that's the reason why people, it wouldn't be wrong for people to suspect people who wear these uniforms, the PF cadres. In October 2016, President Lungu had appointed a commission of inquiry to investigate political violence and voting patterns in the inquiry went on up to January this year when a report was handed in to the head of state, Mwak Pekumwinda, Prime TV News, Lusaka. Moving on to our news this afternoon, a retake of uh, the story on uh, the update or the by-election updates. And patriotic front PF cadres have beaten up a journalist from Breeze FM in Eastern Province. Grace Lungu was on her way to cover the Mkomba ward by election in Lundazi when the incident happened. The cadres first pounced on a taxi driver whom they accused of raising a UPND symbol. We now get to Edward Banda who is online giving us an update on what is happening. Hello Edward, good afternoon. Afternoon Rwanda, how are you? I'm okay and how are you? Would you please give Hi. us an update on what is happening? Uh, in the Fukumba ward of Lundazi district, voting uh, is underway, mm -hmm. and uh, voting started uh, at exactly 06 hours at mm -hmm. Mukomba polling station, where the presiding officer, uh, Piri Aaron, declared the polls open. Mm -hmm. And uh, the turnout is impressive because the queues, uh, there are long queues, which can be seen from the polling stations like Mukomba. As you know, Mukomba Watt has uh, only four polling stations. Mm. That is Mukomba, uh, uh, Chanyondo, uh, Molozi, as well as Gatopola. And in all the polling stations, the queue, there are long queues, people waiting to cast their vote. And uh, the situation is relatively calm, mm. but unfortunately, one of our colleagues from uh, Breeze FM, uh, Grace Lungu, is the one who was attacked by the Patriotic Front cadres as she was on her way to Mukomba, uh, she had a taxi to get her, to take her to Mukomba, and on their way they met uh, the, uh, the vehicle for the patriotic front. And uh, when uh, the, the the people in that vehicle waved at uh, the driver, the driver waved back, and the, those people thought that driver has waved uh, has flashed a UPNT symbol. That's how they get they got out and started beating the driver and subsequently the, the journalist and she was uh, uh, badly beaten with her bruises in her, on her, in her mouth mm. and the matter has since been reported to police. As I am talking, the police have uh, followed up that matter. They are on their way to Mukomba to look for those uh, perpetrators, uh, those who, the, the people who had beaten up the British uh, FM journalist. But as for now, voting is underway and the turnout is impressive. People are, ready, are waiting on the long queues to cut their vote. That is what is happening in Lundazi, particularly Mukomba, what? Mm. Well, uh, well, Edward Banda, thank you so much for the update. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll keep you updated over the by-elections that are currently happening or as the day thank unfolds. So thank you so much. Moving on with our news this afternoon. The Lusaka Magistrate Court has heard a testimony of a chief security officer from the University of Zambia describing how police officers entered the campus and fired tear gas canisters into the students' hostels, leading to the death of a fourth-year female student, Vespas Shimuzila, on October 4, 2018. Fort four-year-old Walia Kalevaila says he called the police after being informed 
of a possible protest by the students and agreed that the police were to monitor the situation from outside but that they decided to enter the campus and fired tear gas canisters into student rooms despite the situation being calm. Mr. Kalebaika told the court that when he heard few gunshots coming from the roadside where the police officers were, he pleaded with the officers not to fire any more shots. Meanwhile, the uncle of the deceased student told the court that he was asked to identify the body of his niece before the doctor could perform this post-mortem. He tells that court that after post-mortem was done, he was told that his niece died of suffocation. We have details in the following report. A 44-year-old chief security officer at the University of Zambia, Wadia Kalewaila, has told the Lusaka Magistrate Court that the police officers that were on the ground during the day of the protest that caught the death of Unza fourth-year student Vespas Shimunjila had entered the university premises despite the students being calm at the point. Kalewaila has told the court that he was the one that had called the police upon being informed at the University of Zambia Great East Road campus and informed them that students were protesting against the delayed and paid meal allowances. Kalewaila told the court that he was the one that had called the police officers upon being informed that there was a protest at the University of Zambia Great East Road campus and informed them that the students were protesting against the delayed and paid meal allowances when the matter came up for hearing the cause of death of Vespas Hamujila before Magistrate Sylvia Munyinya, the Chief Security Officer said he called Mr. Benjamin Ngwile, a Deputy Commanding Officer, Lusaka Aban, who assured him that he would deploy few police officers to monitor the outside of the university to deter students from causing scandals along Greatest Road and anywhere outside the university. Mr. Kalebaila says he was however surprised when he heard gunshots in the campus despite the situation having calmed. He talked to the commanding officer and asked them not to aggravate the situation as the gunshots were making students excited. Despite having talked to the command, Mr. Kalebaila says police officers were seen charging towards October Hostel where they fired tear gas canisters in students' rooms. Mr. Kalebaila testified that the hostel where Vespers was actually caught fire and that during the investigations it was found that the room in October Hostels where Vespers was was very hot and it was choking of both the tear gas canisters and the ordinary smoke. He says the room was completely darkened and the mattresses were all bent and other plastics and pipes were also burning. He told the court further that about 10 minutes to 1 o'clock in the morning of 5th October 2018, rumors spread out that one student had died. The information he went to verify and learned that it was true a student by the name of Vespa Sashimujla that was rushed to leave him when I was a teaching hospital had died and the body was taken to the university teaching hospital. But when he inquired the cause of death, he was told by a nurse on duty right at Levy Mwanawasa Teaching Hospital that it could be as a result of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide poisoning. Mr. Kalevaila further confirmed having picked up about 26 pellets of tear gas canisters within the university and that one student reported having been hit on her forehead with a tear gas canister. The witnesses said will soon testify before the court. Meanwhile, another witness, the deceased uncle, testified that he was called to identify the body of late Vespers Shimunjila, which he did at the university teaching hospital, and that he witnessed the post-mortem as conducted by the medical doctor. The deceased uncle said the doctor showed him the post-mortem results being suffocation. Magistrate Sylvia Munyinya Hearing the inquest as a coroner has however joined the matter to March 1st, 2019. For Prime TV News, I'm Walsh Funda in Lusaka.
A family of a Kitwe taxi driver who died in police custody says it will not spare whoever was involved in the suspected murder of their beloved son. Arobi Sakala emotionally recounts the last days he saw his son, Oscar, who was wanted by police at Riverside Police Station, supposedly to help him to help with investigations rather in the theft of goods by people that had hired him for transportation. Mr. Sakala discloses that there are inconsistencies in the circumstances in which his son died. He has warned that police will be in for a road shock if they think he, will, he has forgotten about the issue. I have traveled from Ndola to Lufanyama district to follow up an issue that has slowly faded from the memory of Kito residents. But the Sakala family is still grieving. Between 15th and 16th November 2018, 30-year-old Oscar Sakala died in custody at Riverside Police Station following his detention in an alleged matter of having transported goods suspected to be stolen. Oscar's death has been an ending controversy in which the family says the police allegedly claimed that the deceased had committed suicide by consuming boom, however visible life-threatening injuries on the body told a different story. At their farm in Lufanyama, a heartbroken Arubi Sakala, who was never given a death certificate, wonders why his son was buried and prolonged release of postmortem results raised a lot of suspicion that someone somewhere was trying to suppress the death of his beloved son. They are, they are promised, they are there in a group, they are there in a group, they are there in they are working, they are enjoying life when my son is rotting in the ground. I would want the law to take his course. The law to take his course. It is unbearable for Imelda to see her tearful husband demand that the truth comes out on why Oscar's job as a taxi driver ended in an unexpected death and in a questionable manner. Other members of the family share their views on the details of this controversy. It has been established that the samples were analyzed actually on the same day of receipt. Meaning even the, the time he came to tell me to say, no, they have run out of reagents, it was uh, merely buying time. Because the fact is that the samples were analyzed on the same day we took the samples to Lusaka on 22nd November, and there was no need for us to even wait up to 2019 to know the results. An unemployed 26-year-old Priscilla Nkata is now a widow and is unable to look after her two children. She is traumatized by the loss of household property after some named police officers broke into a house in Bulangililo Township in Kitwe a few days before her husband was detained. This alleged forced entry is also another issue that the family plans to engage lawyers to use in court. <laughs> So the following day, for the following morning, so This witness account is what raised suspicion that Oscar did not commit suicide, but someone in uniform allegedly murdered him. That is very obvious. Ni must go court. You must. This case must go to court. Clive Kalunga, Prime TV News in Lufuanyama District. Some people of mineral-rich Lufuanyama district has expressed displeasure by the undeveloped status of the area, calling it a shameful livelihood in an economically viable region. Secretary for the Chief Induna Kakonge Crispin in Timbo says it is upsetting to see many thriving mining and timber processing companies in the area, yet none of them are giving back to the community. The prolonged lack of infrastructure such as roads has made business difficult for subsistence farmers that cannot afford expensive transport to ferry their goods. Details in the phone report. Lufanyama is no ordinary district. Despite lagging in infrastructure development, this vast region is known for having emeralds and about 400 companies are mining the precious stones 
Hence, this status has had renowned television channels like National Geographic broadcast documentaries about this lucrative place. Contrary, the people of this famous area wallow in poverty and deplorable roads are common that are also used by emerald mines. Not only is it known for mining, Lufanyama has a lot of sawmills since it has vast timber plantations managed by Zafiko. Here, the Kakonge Lumpuma Road is one of the problems. You can imagine if we want to Tulerima, no Mbapaku Sendama farm produce Sukfumaku no Kutwara Kutown, Chile 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 to Posser and Stay Kalambasan. So Chichin to Chile to Kalipasan, a lot to reach the Pioku government to Kutila, Kuno Kuri Uno Musevo, Kakonge Lumpuma Mukutuma Road, Uyumusevo now we pitch in a chine, etch a Turech Tapko, a Piocha Kumonoku, but Nifo and Eva Turo Lekesheko. Over the years, discrepancies in the distribution of farming inputs has caused setbacks for many subsistence farmers. As such, people of this area feel so neglected that even a sight of a camera does not cheer them. We are going to say that we are going to say that we Umule pitenda ama. Ichu umachiruku pita, tulukubo na chiruku ya. Chile ya. Ema rodile ya. Nga fuebo. Findo tukachita kwa benefiti. Tapalipo. Ichi kwa nkabachi mwena kuma mpalanyo. Due to heavy rains, floods create gullies that prevent easy access. And some motorists are compelled to dig parts of the road to make way to reach their farms. But this is a strenuous task that can only be done by a few individuals desperate to keep their business running. Clive Kalunga, Prime TV Business News in Lufuanyama District. In international news, Progressive Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, Petuz, has petitioned the High Court seeking an order to reverse last month's 150% fuel price hike made by President Emerson Nangagwa, arguing that the move is illegal and unconstitutional. Petus filed the urgent chamber application alongside its Secretary General, Raymond Majongwe, who filed in his personal capacity, while Nangagwa Finance Minister Mtuli Kube, Energy Minister Joram Gumbo, and the Zimbabwe Energy Regulatory Authority have been cited as correspondents. The move to petition the court follows Mnangagwa's announcement of a new fuel prices on January 12, 2019, making the commodity the most expensive in the world. As we end the news, a recap of the headlines. Sesheke Paul turned out impressive while voting is also underway in seven words. Kitwe family of a taxi driver who died in police custody fumes. Lack of development angers Lufuanyama residents. In international news, Zimbabwean president sued over fuel price hikes. On behalf of the entire Prime Television News and Current Affairs team, this has been Luando Billy Check. And remember, you can watch each and every news bulletin on our Facebook page by simply liking our Facebook page, Prime Television Zambia. This has been Luando Billy Check. I was more. Good afternoon. Bye for now.